Yeah. Uh, we're looking at uh, this morning, I uh, decided to look at personal revival. You'll see what I mean as I go through. Personal revival. And the, uh, I'm looking at Paul's prayer to the Ephesians where he, um, in 3.14, where he uh, he looks at this uh, uh, need of the uh, Ephesians. But it's something he mentions in verse 19 that's very important. Uh, I'll read that out. Uh, For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth derives its name. I pray that our, out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And this verse, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's a very powerful verse, isn't it? That last verse. And uh, I'm hoping we can get something out of out of that uh, as I go through. Um, and I thought, well, whilst we pray for revival, we need to continue our walk with the Lord. Uh, we need to keep going. You know, uh, our faith is not a dead faith. It's a live faith. It's a faith that's very real to us, very important to us. And we must keep going no matter what the situation and circumstances we face. Uh, we shouldn't be one. We shouldn't wander about death aimlessly, grieving about without hope or waiting around, being idle or become depressed about our lot in this world. A bit like the Thessalonians appear to be doing, uh, and Paul rebuked them for that. And last time I spoke, it was about praying for love, and I quoted Alistair Begg, who reminded us that we need that inward communion with God. I mean. He, he expressed it um, in his own words. He easily recognized, and I quote him, I need the Spirit of God through the Word of God among the people of God. And that, that really, um, I found it really helpful. Um, and he went on to say, to make the fatherhood of God and the love of his son increasingly precious to me. He didn't get he's giving the impression he's not necessarily arrived somewhere he's still going somewhere he's still increasing in his n knowledge and understanding of god's love and um it, it's a personal challenge to, to all believers i believe you know and uh alistair brought that out in what he stated there um and he said it's because see the world is a constant attraction and temptation to us and it, it it's it's something today uh that is getting worse and worse you know it's a it's a challenge to all christians that this world attracts us and uh, tempts us to go down a, a wide road rather than the, the narrow road you know of god's love in christ um jesus christ is as real today as he ever was and he dwells in the believer's heart through faith whilst we may stand firm on that promise uh, according to what paul wrote he said his love has no limits so there is motivation there for all to grasp at this intimate relationship a, a love that surpasses knowledge said said there uh, paul so i'm suggesting that this may be the personal revival we all need i include myself in that uh, many of the new testament letters clearly cite this as an issue of personal holiness and revival uh, it may not come really until the lord's people are ready for it um you know, I'm sure if someone said to me, are you ready for revival? I'd be a bit um, a bit concerned. You know, how how am I going to cope with that? You know, trusting the Lord, of course, but there are going to be a lot of responsibilities. There's going to be a lot of effort and work required. Um, and we need to be ready for these things. Uh, and I wonder if we are. Um, UK society today, um, in the days, should I say, of the Great Awakening revivals was very different to today. There was a lot of widespread poverty. There was no welfare system. Industry was just taking off and it was dangerous to life. There was a lack of medicine, general education, and children were put to work. Um, as we know, that all changed over the years. But um, people in those days were looking for hope and meaning. You know, the people themselves in general were looking for that hope and meaning. So uh, 
uh, they flocked to hear the word of God when people like Whitfield uh, stood up and Wesley, uh, the Wesleys and uh, Hal Harris, people like that, uh, stood up and preached in, in the fields, etc., uh, as well as in, in churches, um, very much in the fields. They flocked in their thousands <coughs> to hear the word of God. Um, so strangely enough, there are still many countries in our present world that reflect those kind of characteristics, aren't they? If you think about it, there are lots of countries in the world now that reflect those kind of characteristics today. Um, so we, uh, we we see God at work, though, still, in those situations where people are drawn to the word of God. And, uh, and we hear wonderful stories from Open Doors and other organizations that, that keep a tab on these things. Um, I suggest in these days, unbelief, really, is probably the greatest obstacle that we face as Christians, the unbelief of people um, and the arrogance. Um, no matter how much we understand our present culture or climate, we certainly need much love and forbearance. Um, we need to be very convincing in our presentation of the gospel, obviously relying on the Holy Spirit to use what we are able to say or share in grace and love. Um, but now I'm going back to a more personal issue where we reminded look, what Jesus prayed for all believers in, in John 17. And from verse 20, he says, my prayer, this is quite, quite, I find this quite, um, quite helpful and, and quite challenging. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. And I've re heard that read many times, but the rest of it is not read a lot. Um, that all of them may be, may be uh, one father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to a complete unity. And then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want these you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and I will continue to make you known in order that the love you have given me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Isn't that a wonderful passage and, and very personal, you know, uh, very challenging to us. Uh, but if you bear in mind what Paul said earlier in that verse 19, you know, it is um, it, it is a love that um, um, it, it surpasses knowledge. Uh, that's the way he expressed it. And Alistair Begg's words as well. Uh, he wants his love, love of the son to increase in him. And so should we. Um, if we expect to see revival in our times, uh, the challenge today, as far as I can discern, is that um, um, if the world around us will not believe in Jesus Christ or God, it doesn't seem to want to. Is there anything about us as Christians or the church that is contributing to this sad state of affairs? And that's a question. Um, is there anything about us? You know, we, we, we if, you know, you remember uh, Jesus challenged the churches in Revelation to look at themselves and in some cases lost their first love for the Lord, didn't they? Uh, and things like that. And do, do people see our love for the lord in the way we are in the way we're together the way we're united in our in our love for god and, and our cause as 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 individuals and as a church are we too busy with our personal agendas have worldly and ecclesiastical matters or denominational differences taken center stage uh, are we perhaps feeling powerless to do anything useful or positive uh, and i ask myself that question quite a lot you know I don't feel uh, necessarily powerful or anything like that. I feel quite normal, and I feel uh, sometimes un unfit for the task. Uh, but, but then God gives grace, doesn't he, and helps in those times of need. Should we be looking uh, inward, not outward, regarding sin? Could the churches in Revelation help find, find that out? You know, should we not be reviewing our... Uh, 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 a relationship and approach uh, as churches as well. Um, we need to be brought to a complete unity. We have to be in Christ. We need the glory and love of God to shine in our hearts. And 
upon our lives in order to serve well as an individual and as churches. That's what I'm saying. And that's the message I get from thinking about what Christ said to the churches in Revelation. We need to, you know, we need him all the time. You know, we can't do without him. Um, a certain MP the other day, I'm sure many of you know, stood up in Parliament and uh, not only because he is a believer, but because I believe the Lord's people have been praying for divine intervention in our country to help. And I think uh, we should be extremely grateful for this intervention but also motivated to add to it locally where we possibly can. Uh, whether other people would have taken much note of that, I, I, I don't I don't know, I doubt. But, you know, we can use that kind of thing to challenge people and say, look, you know, there are MPs who believe that God is important to our nation, has been in the past and should be in the future. Um, so let's continue to pray earnestly for effectual ministry that will help the Lord's people to love God and be more united. Remember, that ministry is so important to faith. We should, it needs to challenge sinners to repentance before God, within and outside the church. Uh, world affairs will always be presented to us via the news, media, etc., but the gospel should be our aim and purpose, despite any inconvenience that may cause. The gospel should always be our priority. Um, I'd ask you to pray that we were going on the streets this morning, later on, uh, on the doors, should I say. And uh, I know some people are going on the streets preaching, probably, like Alan and, and William. Uh, do pray for them, because uh, we have a lad in our church who's only 30, and he's he's preaching on the streets of Northwich uh, a couple of times a week. And he's uh, a busy man uh, with a pregnant wife, and he still goes out there and was called to do that. You know, and people walk by and ignore him, but I believe. God will speak to people as they as he continues. Anyway, I read it now something from um, earlier this week by J.C. Ryle, which I, which I read in, in devotion. It says, um, it may help to grasp how we can understand the love of our Lord. He said, he, Jesus, showed unwearied diligence in doing good, regardless of the reception that he found. Uh, man's unbelief did not move our Lord or hinder his working. He was always about his father's work. Here is the Christian's example. Let us labour to do good in our day and generation, redeeming the time. Time is flying and souls are perishing day by day. And if we can't get out and do anything actively, we can certainly pray. So there's always something we can do. Now remember the Lord, a bit of encouragement here. Um, I've, I've picked out some verses um, about uh, a theme, which is peace. The Lord blesses his people with peace. I'm not talking about the kind of peace between nations or people. I'm talking about a supernatural peace. The Lord blesses his people with peace. These verses are very helpful. He promises peace to his people. He'll be called the Prince of Peace, as referring to Jesus, of course. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. That is, that's helpful. I will make a covenant of peace with them. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. In me you may have peace. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, says in Hebrews 4. That's mentioned twice in there. There's also a warning there as well about that. We need to go on and find that Sabbath rest with God. Uh, so I'd encourage you about that. Now, um, I'm going to attempt to show a... Am I allowed to show a picture on here, um, Chuck? Can I display it? Yeah, I can use the system to do that, can I? How do I do that? Uh, down the bottom, is it? Um, doesn't matter if I can't. No, I'll leave it. That's too difficult. Um, you can a, go ahead, so I've, I've clicked on it so you can do it. Sorry? You can go ahead. It's not um, anything so amazing, but the, the, I've got the picture open now. So, I have so on the bottom it says share screen. Share screen, and then I pick the picture, don't I? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that one. Can you see that? Does that show up? Yes, yeah. I can see it. Okay. 
Well, I'm reading on with that picture on the screen then. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try. Um, this this is an image, yeah? I've got, I've got it in my bedroom. Actually. When I wake up, I look over the opposite wall and that picture is there. It's as if Jesus is holding our hand. You know, the, the church is the bride of Christ, yeah? It's as if he's holding our hand and guiding us through, not knowing what's around the bend. There's a, a tree there, there's a river of life tree where there's good and bad fruit you know we, we know these images from the bible and and it, to me it's all there in that picture and he's walking ahead holding the hand and uh um uh, there are obviously um uh some other comments i want to make now is about this common we've got common gifts we, we need to love one another of course and i encourage you in the church to, to think about these things we've got common gifts we all have salvation provided by christ we are all in debt and dwelt by the Holy Spirit, all share the same eternal and glorious destiny in the presence of God. These are gifts shared by all God's chosen people. There is a higher love that, that motivates and shows pleasure in others. So let us remember it well. And then we have a, a common gift. There's a common love, therefore. The love of Christ promoted constant companionship, close conversation and careful consideration with much patience and prayer. This is selfless love. Disciples need a mutual recognition that we are given by God to one another. But there are some hindrances to that love, of course. Hesitation to share ourselves with others due to a previous perhaps bad experience. Even so, we should do what is right. Unfamiliarity with receiving help and support. Let us be willing to learn how to give of ourselves so we will be much wiser on that area anger or resentment towards others act as we should and don't allow your feelings to get the better of you self-centeredness look to christ and see the love already being shown by others around you and then the expressions of love think well of others and applaud their achievements show visible expressions of love like mutual affection obviously that is acceptable so in conclusion um personal revival is more about understanding our ongoing need not necessarily needs of others we all must work out our salvation so that we discover more of the love of christ that surpasses knowledge this love finds pleasure in god and others it is bestowed freely on each one from above so I challenge you all to go on seeking it. Go on seeking it, uh, because that is so important. How do I stop sharing now? Uh, no. I'm trying to stop sharing now. That's it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So let us pray. I'm so short breath.